Okay, great. Um, well, uh, good afternoon or good morning, I guess, still. Uh, my name is Nicole Idavia. I am, as Jennifer mentioned, the Research and Outreach Manager for the Coastal and Heartland National Estuary Partnership, or CHNEP. The CHNEP is responsible for working with local, state, and federal governments, as well as scientists, resource managers, community leaders, and nonprofits to organize, restore, and protect water resources and habitats in Central and Southwest Florida. I'll be giving a brief overview of how the CHNEP is furthering climate readiness and forward-looking restoration planning projects, and how we will prepare and buffer our water budgets and ecosystems to be more climate ready and resilient in the face of impending changes. CHNEP is the umbrella entity under, winning, under which many stakeholder groups can come together to engage in regional research and restoration. I want to thank the members of the partnership for their continued guidance and contributions, without which this work would not be possible. Next slide. So uh, again, what do we do? All of our work supports the Collective Comprehensive and Conservation Management Plan, which is the five-year strategic plan drafted by all the members of the partnership. This plan has four actions focusing on water quality improvement, hydrological restoration, fish, wildlife, and habitat protection, and public engagement. Today, I'll be focusing on how we are addressing the issue of hydrological restoration and how our climate work is woven throughout. Okay. The vision for hydrological restoration that guides our work is to reestablish appropriate freshwater flows across the landscape to sustain healthy wetlands, rivers, and estuaries. However, significant challenges remain to reverse damage and balance limited water resources between people and natural ecosystems. Recently, the partnership has worked to create a number of watershed restoration plans with the goal to get the water right, identifying what needs to happen to restore and maintain our water supply, flood protection, water quality, and water-dependent resources in the face, again, of existing degradation and depletion, climate change, and continued regional growth. The strategy we use to support our vision includes uh, the continued collection of data of surface water, groundwater, and rainfall, as well as new technology is developed to update integrated surface and groundwater hydrological models. These models simulate the water cycle in the natural environment and predict how future changes to the landscape and environmental conditions will impact where surface water and groundwater will move in response. Hydrologic models simulate how much and where water can be stored and moved in order to protect the environment. Modeling can inform decision-making for evaluating and planning under different climatic and hydrologic conditions. The results from these efforts are used to form recommendations in the resulting watershed plans. Next slide. These watershed management plans identify both human and ecological water requirements and establish goals and objectives to meet those needs, balancing the water demands for drinking, drainage, navigation, and recreation while preserving the ecological health of natural systems. Due to the large scale complexity and cost of implementing the plans, most need a multi-partner, multi-phase, and multi-year approach. The CHNEP supports continued effective coordination between agencies that manage water, as well as local, state, and federal governments, permitting and capital programs impacting hydrologic flow, water storage, flood control, and water quality. By focusing attention and resources on a landscape level strategy, restoration projects can yield greater cost benefits. Watershed initiatives are a way to build partnerships, leverage funding, and address complex problems. Initiatives within the CHNEP area include uh, a number of them. So we have the Upper Peace and Miami River initiatives, the Charlotte Harbor Flatwood initiative, as well as the Lehigh Headwaters and the South Lee County Watershed initiatives. Additionally, the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, or SERP, provides a framework and a guide to protect and restore water resources in Central and Southern Florida, including the Everglades. Today, we'll be talking about recent planning our partnership has undertaken for two of these initiatives and how climate readiness is a major component of the process. Next slide. First, let's quickly scale out to briefly touch on some of the problems we seek to address. Timing, volume, and distribution of freshwater flows are critical ecological structuring elements for wetlands, lakes, rivers, and estuaries. Throughout the CHNEP area, water flows have been dramatically altered from their historical natural states. They have been redirected, impeded, or accelerated by efforts to drain water off the landscape quickly to protect development from flooding. Natural streams were channelized to be straighter and deeper, wetlands were ditched, and cross basin channels were dug, resulting in a loss of natural water recharge and water quality treatment functions, as well as loss of habitat. This created flooding in some areas with too much water and starving other areas, or alternately flooding and starving the same area. 
This current practice is degrading water bodies and their ability to sustain ecosystems. These excessive discharges often contain high pollutant loads and create high volume freshwater pulses that alter and impact estuarine and marine habitats, a problematic condition known as flashiness. Climate change is expected to alter precipitation patterns in Southwest Florida, reduce rainfall during the drying season, combined with greater evaporation during the warmer months, and increased water demand for agriculture and urban development will compound existing problems. Increased flooding during more intense rain events may flood natural areas and overwhelm infrastructure designed to manage stormwater, as was mentioned earlier. Changes of freshwater input into creeks and bays will alter their chemical, physical, and ecological characteristics further disrupting salinity zones for important nursery areas for fish and other wildlife. Overall, climate stressors will likely make increasing freshwater and groundwater availability much more challenging. Next slide. Compounding the reductions in freshwater flows is the increase in salinity on the coasts and underground. Sea level rise will push into freshwater areas at the surface and groundwater can intrude into the aquifer. Groundwater and surface waters interact in important ways to maintain the health of the Florida springs, lakes, rivers, wetlands, and estuaries. Aquifer levels can decline due to reduced rainfall associated with climate variability, too much human consumptive use, and loss of recharge areas on land. Reduced aquifer levels can negatively impact water flows in springs and streams and exacerbate saltwater intrusion, as was mentioned in a previous presentation. Again, stresses on ecosystems due to increased demands for human consumptive water use and altered hydrology are expected to be exacerbated by climate change. Rising sea levels will alter timing, depth, and duration of saltwater inundation and salinity gradients in estuaries and streams. Maintaining needed balance of fresh water in our rivers and creeks may require additional volumes of fresh water to be preserved for natural systems. Modeling results here demonstrate how habitats in need of particular balance of salt and fresh water will shift or migrate upstream and upslope due to sea level rise. Next slide. And finally, these habitats and wetlands will not only uh, be shifting due to sea level rise. Increased temperatures can even change how long water will stay in wetland areas. This is known as hydro period. And how much water will evaporate from plants and soil, which is known as evapotranspiration which can make certain areas too dry for some species of plants to survive. Maintaining the natural hydro period would mean water stays in the wetland for the amount of time needed to support the native plant communities. There are optimum conditions for both hydro periods and water depths for particular habitats in Southwest Florida, which can be seen here. Access to water is a competitive advantage and has the potential to alter habitats as species migrate. As was mentioned this morning, uh, this, underscores, this is underscored by current studies um, that climate warming can reduce the resilience of wetlands and alter plant community structures. Next slide. So now that we've established the problems, let's quickly jump into um, some of the planning efforts. Uh, so um, first we're going to talk about the Lee County Watershed Initiative. The focus area can be seen on the right graphic, just south of the Caloosahatchee River and its Darrow Bay region. This project was created um, an integrated ground and surface water model for hydrological restoration of the South Lake County watershed. The project is intended to be additive to other local efforts in order to fill gaps and bridge various modeling efforts and create a landscape level plan. Anticipated results would be restored wetland levels and hydro periods, improved water quality and improved habitat, as well as protection of public freshwater and drinking water supplies. Next slide. Moving into the findings quickly from the model, we can see that in general, when comparing pre-development and existing conditions, there has been ex extensive drainage along the watershed. Um, so again, this will make these areas less resilient when we do see um, continued developments and continued climate impacts. Next slide. And again, we're looking here at some of the future condition scenarios that were modeled. Now that we understand what alteration has already occurred, we can model which restoration outcomes provide the best results. And you can see at the top there, we listed um, some of the assumptions about climate change that we incorporated into all of the modeling results. Um, looking again at sea level rise, temperature, evapotranspiration and precipitation changes, and how those factored in when we look at different levels of uh, development and restoration. Next slide. Here we've isolated the detrimental ecological outcomes caused by climate change alone. The future conditions model results show a decrease in hydro periods and wet season water depth with respect to existing conditions on a regional scale. This is evidenced in the difference maps here, 
Um, and you can see by 2050, the length of wetland hydro periods will decrease by up to one month on average. And wet season water depths will decrease by about a half an inch on average. Um, this is just inland. You can see near the tidal areas, um, there is also an increase in the salty areas. This will have cascading impacts on delicately balanced e wetland ecosystems in need of the wetland plants and animals that depend on them. Next slide. All right, so looking at the available freshwater budget, and I'm going to try and wrap it up here quickly, um, and isolating this, we can see that this too will change. We'll see increased evapotranspiration, which means a decrease in river flows. Again, all of these results are sort of compounding on one another. Uh, and so this will cause drier conditions inland and a redu reduction of river outflows. Next slide. And here you can see the results. Um, we focus in a little bit more on the sea level rise results along the coast. And you can see that salt water will again start to push upstream in rivers uh, near the bay. Next slide. Okay. And so here are some of the outcomes from our findings. Essentially, um, this plan proposed solutions for hydroelectrical restoration in the South Lake County watershed. Um, so we, uh, in the plan, made recommendations for both gray and green infrastructure solutions. Most importantly, uh, we need to preserve and expand uh, habitats where uh, wetlands can be uh, taken over. And then we also need to implement a number of places where there are opportunities for gray infrastructure additions, where there are developed areas to better manage those um, and help to reduce the impacts of additional water uh, and climate change. Next slide. Okay. And so, again, if anyone is interested in hearing a little bit more about these results, the report will be uh, on our website. I will share the link to that in the last slide. And so I, again, also wanted to briefly touch on the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative. This uh, was a project that was initiated to uh, collect surface and groundwater and flow monitoring data in a not well understood area. And you can see there on the maps, this encompasses Charlotte and Lee County. And you can see where the historic water flows uh, used to go in the infographic on the bottom there, and now where they are currently going. And so again, this project is uh, currently underway, and what we're looking to understand is better ways to restore the wetlands that are a little bit further north and west, and also rehydrate areas to the south and the east, and make sure that we have the correct flow going out to Charlotte Harbor and the tidal creeks, and also south towards the Clusahatchee and Lee County areas with um, pro also providing flood protection in those areas. Next slide. Okay. And so these are just some of the problems we're looking to address more specifically. You can see we focused in on those areas. Again, those are some of the wetland areas that are alternately getting too much water or too little water and some of the areas to the south that we need to make sure that we're helping with flood protection. And again, those results will be shared when the uh, project is concluded. Hopefully, we can share them at our next climate summit. Next slide. Okay, so again, I wanted to thank all the members of the partnership um, for their help in uh, launching these programs, sustaining these programs. They are part of the planning process, but they also are a huge part of the implementation process. This is a, you know, the planning is just the first step. Implementation um, requires funding and the CHNEP is there to support all of the members of the partnership as they try and implement both gray and green projects in order to uh, provide hydrological protection. And so again, you can find the report for the South Lake County Watershed Initiative on our CHNEP website right there. And you can find um, the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative page by visiting the CHNEP Water Atlas. And I will be available for questions. Okay, first question, who does CHNEP share data with in addition to DEP, FWC, SWIFMA? How can all data collected be accessed in one place? Um, so that's a really great question. Uh, CHNEP data is all publicly available on that CHNEP Water Atlas website that I just mentioned. Um, all of the reports from um, the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative project are up there now, all of the current reports, as well as additional data. We gather that data in addition to water quality data, pretty much any um, data that we can gather for the CHNEP region, which again spans all the way from Polk County down to Estero Bay region, uh, we gather and put that on one available website. 
what are some of the watershed restoration projects that have been done or planned? So um, as far as, let me think, as far as Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative, um, one of the projects that is underway is uh, what we're looking to do is reduce, um, there is actually too much water sitting on the Babcock Web wildlife management area. And what we're looking to do is take that back out to areas where it belongs, um, maybe east or I'm sorry, west towards Yucca Pens area um, and maybe south towards the Clusahatchee. And one of the projects that the South Water Water Management District already has underway is they have acquired a property, um, a pivotal property that is right next to the Babcock Web. And they are currently modeling the best way to make that area a water storage, a natural water storage area to help some of move the, some of that water that's artificially impounded on the web um, into areas where it needs to be. Uh, let's see. Let's see, were you able to share your work with Lee County DNR? Yes, Lee County is one of our partners and they were highly involved in the planning process. Um, again, um, these plans are built on behalf of the partners. This is a need that CGMP sees that the partners have for watershed planning. And so we bring them all together on this regional scale because again, it's not just, you know, for instance, with Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods, it's not just Lee County or Charlotte County, but sometimes they can't work outside the boundaries um, of their own areas. And so CHNEP is able to uh, put together these regional plans where water management districts, counties, municipalities, um, and maybe even other state agencies can work to implement some of these projects. So yes, we are working actively with all of the partners in the region through the initiatives. And uh, let's see, who is your decision maker audience and are they listening? Um, again, they are actively engaged in the CHNEP and through these initiatives. And we are seeing some of these plans move towards implementation. So uh, yes, we hope to be reporting positive results back to you all in the future. And uh, thank you all again.